Toby Baxendale, it's a pleasure to have you here with us uh, today. Great pleasure and to be here. You are an entrepreneur in the UK. You've miraculously survived the meltdown of 2008 and thrived ever since. So uh, you've proven yourself, I think, many times over. <laughs> Well, it's very kind of you to say so. I, w I wouldn't wish to put that experience upon anyone, though. <laughs> um, it's extremely tough uh, to uh, get your costs into line and to turn the things around and be and remain profitable in that environment. But you have several lives. You're not just an entrepreneur. You're an intellectual and something of a political activist, and you're very much involved in the Cobden mm. Center. I'd like to talk about uh, just a, a little bit about each of these things. But let's start with the issue that m is most interesting, I think, to us, uh, which concerns this bill that was introduced, a piece of legislation in the, in the, in the parliament uh, about banking. Can you give us yes. some background on what, what this well, is about? The background of that, there are there are a handful of, of truly inspirational um, backbenchers um, and, and members of parliament who have, have not succumbed to the party whips. Um, the nearest example you have over here is obviously Ron Paul, and, and he has a, a great following. Well, the, these guys, Douglas Carswell, for example, and, and Steve Baker, uh, are men of uh, principle, and they're there they're there to represent their their constituents. And they're there to represent um, kind of free market free market ideas as well. That's their that's their that's their mission. So um, Douglas Carswell um, got in got in touch with me when he got a slot for a ten minute rule bill, um, to which is um, a rare a rare privilege uh, that um, independent parliamentarians can introduce legislation. Um, Sixty five. Uh, acts have come into fruition on onto the statute book since the Second World War as 10-minute rule bills, but um, it does require the cooperation of the ruling parliamentary party who control the control the legislation. So, his when he when he got the space, um, the first thing uh, he wanted to do was to address um, this issue issue of banking, uh, and to put it to put it very simply. Um, Without being too radical, uh, in in the first instance, I said, well, the, fir the first thing I, I would suggest uh, we do, and what he wanted to do, was to give honest labelling uh, for for bank accounts, because there's a huge, tremendous confusion um, in uh, the the UK, and I'm sure it's here as to as to what you're actually doing when you're depositing. Um, with most people thinking they're depositing for safekeeping, right. um, and 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 most most people are actually quite horrified when they find out what their bank is doing with their uh, with their money. And in fact, actually, you know, it's not actually their money because when they deposit, as we know, it's a it's a lending arrangement with a bank. And um, so the bill the bill was constructed, um, and uh, Stefan Kinsella uh, played his his role in helping draft the legalese. Of, of the bill, and uh, and Douglas uh, presented it to his par his parliamentary colleagues um, with a very simple reform that going forward into the future. So it wasn't um, retrospective; it's prescriptive. Going 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 forward into the future um, to to require all, all, all banks to um, off offer either a, a safe custodial um, uh, account, um, clearly labelled, everyone. And knowing what they're getting involved in, and just let lending traditional lending and inter intermediary services. So you're not asking anything of banks that's not asked of anybody else in the free market. If I sell this computer and the um, the hard drive doesn't work or the screen doesn't work, I would have to I would disclose this. And if I fail to do so, then they would return it back and say, "Well, you didn't." Or if you sell a house and the foundation is cracked, you need to uh, explain right. that. Yeah. So you're asking you just, the bill just simply asks banks to disclose. Um, what kind of uh, uh, what's what kind of reserves are available, or what's happening to that to the money that is being deposited into the account? That's right, and to, and and to give the customer a very explicit choice. Your 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 choice is 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 depositing for safekeeping. Mm -hmm. um, so so the bank is a custodian. Uh, to you, or, or 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 your choices for for lending, um, le lending you obviously you're, you're bearing um, some of uh, the risk. Yes. Um, in in implied, uh, you do it over a time based uh, period, and in return you get um, you you get in you get interest. And this is this is nothing but uh, the codification of a of a distinction that uh, existed before the state gave banks special privileges to mm. to treat a seeming warehouse contract as as a uh, as a lending contract. Right? That's that's right. So all, all all we're requiring is clarity in 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 this first bill, clarity in contract law. Right. Um, and and that's it. And and I think. 
think pe- people at that people at that point in time, once they're empowered with a bit more knowledge and information, um, then they can make very very sensible choices about their finances, mm-hmm. um, and and um, you know hopefully uh, reintroduce uh, the um, the concept of a bank being a fiduciary. Um, to 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 uh, well, it should be a, a, fi- a fiduciary relationship between banker and client, um, which seems to have completely gone by the wayside. Right, and and there was there's there's no expectation that you have of precisely what the customer would choose because a, a customer might uh, want uh, more risk. That's right, and uh, get to, uh, hoping for some some uh, reward in exchange, and they might choose safety. And, that, and and perfect liquidity all the time, guaranteed liquidity all the time. That, that's correct, and and the bill also it it um we we got a lot of criticism from um, fractional reserve free bankers, um but of course it doesn't preclude um people engaging or 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 a, or a bank explicitly. Um, setting up a, a, a fractional reserve free banking contract. Right. But, yeah, I mean, it's um, a brilliant solution, uh, mm-hmm. Toby. And was this your your idea? Was it just something that came together after a result of consultations with many different people? Uh, well, it, it was an. It was a. I, I suppose I've made um, those ideas aware to the parliamentarians, mm-hmm. and the parliament parliamentarians have actually been brave enough and inspirational enough to 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 want to grasp that idea. Um, and they they've then you know come uh, come come back and and and, and seize the opportunity. And it's, it's quite um, there's an irony to this as uh, as well in the House of Lords, unbe- unbeknownst to us, um, that the Earl of Caithness, um, who was a, a minister uh, during Ma- Margaret Thatcher's uh, uh, period of, of office, um, he actually did the same bill uh, a year before. Um, so in the, we we now have we now have a, a little um, contingent of lords and a little contingent of uh, uh, in in the House of Commons who are, who are interested gen- genuinely interested in banking reform, um, you know. And I think really if we can't if we can't advance the debate at all in this environment. Uh, then we are never ever well, it, going it, to advance it, it, the debate. It does pose a, a special challenge to Austrians who have been thinking about these topics. You know, how do you make these ideas real? Mm. I mean, of course, we all would uh, dream of a gold standard or, mm. or the end of fiat money. But uh, t- given the existing structure, how do you rein in the capacity of the banking system to create unlimited amounts of of credit uh, and money? Um, contrary to their depositor, depositors' wishes, and this is this is a great way to do it. Yeah, I, it strikes me it's a wonderful thing. That's right, and, and, and it wouldn't in in such uh, in such a simple um, one. I think it's a two page bill. It was you know it's, it, that's how legislation should be. Um, you know you can you can effectively stabilize um, the banking system going go, going forward. Um, because pe- people fa- people face face with choices and and w- will um, settle down into into a pattern that's uh, sustainable, you know, between between uh, depositing for safekeeping and 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 and, and, and well, so lending. It's the same as we look at our stock portfolio and mm. we divide it up between very safe things and medium safe things and and risky things, and we want a diversity. So that might be the the effects, but there's no way to know in advance. No. Right. Now, there are important macroeconomic implications for this because it does put certain limits on, on uh, the, the ability of, this, of central banks to inspire the creation of massive new amounts of money. Yes. Well, you can, we can either be explicit about this <laughs> now, or, or, we can, uh, or we can just hope that won't get noticed. <laughs> well, it does remove a certain power, and I suppose, I suppose there are people who do understand this point, right? Yes, um, I mean, my uh, greatest ob- objective in the, in the Cobden Centre will, will, will be to, you know, go for the jugular um, of uh, of uh, of the uh, the state to cut the oxygen and to cut the uh, cut the blood supply off, right. to force it to be honest. Because right. I don't have I don't have a problem with uh, with, with politicians com- coming to the electorate and saying. I'm going to take um, X from you, and I'm going to give it to Y, because I feel I feel that such and such a, a cause that it's going to is is deserving, and so on and so forth. A politician can say that to me, and you can vote for that, or you can vote against that. But what the politicians uh, say is is they is they is they say. Is they say I'm 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 going to ta- I'm I'm not I'm not going to take from X and I'm not gonna, uh, but I'm going to give a lot to Y, 
Um, so, so, so they 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 create this um, a kind of whole uh, uh, new bit, new existence for themselves, almost like they're a third party, a uh, benevolent f third party offering offering you free free goods if you vote for them. Um, so it would force it would force honest politics. Um, so the politicians can on, only um, on, only go on spending plans based on based on what they um, on what they can raise convi ra raise off the public. It's very interesting when a, a friend of, uh, of mine is is the Euro MEP um, Dan Hannan, and uh, he was telling me when when he went to Switzerland on a fact finding mission, um, he was much um, much encouraged uh, with the um, robustness of the uh, of the electorates there in the cantons, um, because they, they 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 when a politician comes to that to, to them they always just ask how much and from who, yeah, and then they make their decisions accordingly. Now, when he was speaking to all the politicians, um, trying to learn from the from the Swiss and the cantonal systems, they're all saying to him, no, 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 you definitely, definitely don't want to do, you definitely don't want to do what we do here. You can never do anything. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and he was saying, well, that's, that's precisely why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think if you if you can in, enforce um, honest government at, at, at the same time, as honest as it possibly can be, uh, so, so a politician can only come to you and and, and 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 say I'm going to take X from you to give to Y, then you can vote on that. That's right, and it's it's a brilliant reform because you're talking about a, a profound monetary reform ultimately, mm. and and fiscal reform, and a really a dramatic change in mm. the in the way governments are financed and public policy is financed through through just two pages, two pages, and yeah. and, and a, a bill that does nothing other than ask for for honesty, for honesty, yeah. Well, Jeff, that's correct, and in 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 our fellow free market um, orientated, you know, think tanks and do tanks uh, around the world and pe people who are interested in this. I, I, I've got to say, I'm staggered that, that people don't focus on this really. Uh, you need to go, we can talk about, you know, reform of free trade here and, you know, an abolition of this, this law here and that law there. We're tinkering at the end of the day. We just need to focus our firepower and go for the absolute jugular, go for the, the blood and the oxygen uh, supply. And and just 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 hit it there with a with a very simple sim simple reform, and you could transform. And uh, it, it, there's a strategic brilliance to this too, because if you oppose this bill, you have to. Uh, the burden is on you to explain why you're in favor of uh, dishonesty. Exactly. Or, uh, why why you're against disclosure? Yeah. Well, true, Jeff. I that's I, I agree with that. But we we've got to. We in a ten minute, ten minute rule bill. If you don't um, get the support of the governing party, they'll effectively make sure you won't have the uh, the time to uh, de debate it. But these politicians are, are very determined um, indivi in individuals. Um, they're they're of the tradition of um, the Manchester School liberals, um, who who you know abolished the Corn Laws and, and other other, you know, terribly um, privileged inducing acts um, at the expense of the, uh, of, the of the general population. These guys are determined. And every year, um, come hell or high water, you know, we'll, rep re we'll reproduce the bill and, you know, slowly but surely one or two more politicians uh, come on side, and especially as crisis still continues. And, you know, we, we'll, we will persevere. Yeah. What are the prospects? The prospects at the, at the moment are extremely low. Yeah, because uh, we haven't got uh, a governing party who, who who will give us the legisl legislative time. But uh, you know, you look at the success of Ro uh, uh, of Ron Paul. He's been he's been at the Fed uh, for honest disclosure for I don't know how many years, two decades or something, and longer, and maybe maybe longer. But you know, eventually, perseverance, the arguments clear, consistent. You know, challenge the argument by all means. Say say tell us why we're wrong. You know. Uh, or, or don't, and slowly, 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 people people will get behind you. To some extent, I would say that this argument seems to be inspired, well, of course, by Rothbard's mystery of banking, but um, more directly uh, and more immediately by Huerta de Soto's book, uh, right? Money, bank... And credit cycles, yeah. Well, the, I mean, you, you, you published the book here. I mean, the, the, the mission of the Mises Institute is, you know, tr just sensational and tremendous and well done for you translating that um, from Spanish. 
that's been a great influence on me. And now and I noticed from our, our website, I think nearly 4,000 people have downloaded the book in full. I think of all the money you're losing. <laughs> <laughs> Teasing about that. Yeah, yeah which, we're, which we're absolutely delight, de, de, delighted about. Um, but he, set, he sets out the case um, for, for honest banking um, very, very, very clearly. And he relates the, the microeconomics to the macroeconomics in such a beautiful way, the institution of banking to its effects on business cycles more and broadly. He, that, that, that's right. And he, he's, he, he's, a true, he's a true inspiration. He's one of the greats. And, you know, his books will be enduring. That book will be an enduring book um, for many, 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 many years and many generations. Mm -hmm. I thor thoroughly uh, recommend it. Yes, but Ro Ro Rothbard, Rothbard's book is always the always the great um, entry level eye opener. He uh, took um, no prisoners and spared no punches. You're speaking of what has government to, done to our money. Tony, yeah, yeah, just absolutely. 1963 of all things. A great, great, um, yeah, great eye opener, and I'd recommend that to any anyone to uh, anyone to read who's got a passing interest in in, uh, in in banking. But actually, it's one of the most critical books in 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 all of uh, pro liberty books um, because if you get that money reform right, you really you really do um, put the handcuffs on the politicians mm -hmm. um, and 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 enforce honest. Um, Government, you unplug the money machine. Now, yeah. uh, over the last year, or maybe it's been the last eighteen months, uh, we've seen amazing growth in the work of the Cobden Center. Mm. Uh, tell me a little bit about this. You were involved in its founding. Yes, that's right. Well, on the the the, the inspiration is the back page of um, Hayek's denationalization of money, uh, where he where he calls for. Um, a, a sound money movement to rival the corn law reform movements of, of, of the 1830s, 1840s. And um, that piqued my interest when I was, um, I think, 16 or 17 when I, when I um, first read that. Um, and I just thought, well, you know, that's speaking to me. Um, if no one's done that by the time I have time to, to do that, then I will uh, aim to set that up. And I've had... There's been um, tremendous um, uh, help and support. I did attempt to get it set up uh, three or four years ago. We did, and we had Jan Lester in, involved, a, a great English libertarian uh, thinker, but it, it didn't really get any, any traction. Um, Steve Baker uh, came uh, to see me via, was put in touch via Lou, actually, Lou Rockwell, and um, he he then did the technology to get, get, the, site, get the site up and running. Um, he's then become the MP for Wickham, so we've got a great um, Cobdenite um, in, in, in Parliament. And uh, Dr. Tim Evans, um, who was uh, president of the Libertarian Alliance, he was an old uh, uh, university chum uh, from LSE, and he's, he's run um, various, um, the Centre for New Europe and it's done various other things, and he is now our, our full-time CEO. So we're starting to get traction. And, and, and at the mo at the moment, I, I've I, I fun I funded it principally uh, along with um, an, an, another donor who donates at the same level to me. But following very much in the Mises Institute's uh, um, you know tradition, I, I want to be a tiny donor um, going for going forward. I want to have no uh, financial uh, influence or depend, and I want the thing to have no dependence upon me whatsoever. I want a multiplicity of. Uh, uh, of, of little donors, so we can always have true independence. But things are going and well. Andrew Duncan is writing. Uh, he's a wonderful writer. He's yeah. doing these great reviews. I mean, these re reviews have helped me understand better the, the books that we are publishing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's, yeah. he's a man of great insight. Yeah, he's a, he's um, a very uniquely talented individual. Uh, we hope he writes more. Um, he he has a, trem a tremendous output, um, and I think he's going to be our, he's going to be our, our David Gordon. <laughs> um, I, ho I hope as, uh, well, his, as well. His enthusiasm is one of his passion. His knowledge is really something. I enjoy reading the the website. Yeah, oh, good. And uh, traffic is up, I suppose. Is it? Yes, yes. We we we're, we're getting we're getting traction about a thousand um, unique readers a day. Good. So it's you know starting. It, we've only been going for a, a year and a bit, and. Um, you know, we 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 intend to um, th this year spend a lot of time on fundraising and really building the the basis of the independence, mm -hmm. of financial independence, and and to keep on running um, these these campaigns in campaigns in Parliament, and to 
try and also influence our other other fellow uh, people in the think tank world in in the United Kingdom that um, actually, you know, what, what what we're saying is is tremendously important. Well, I think you have had this influence. I mean, if you look at the work of IEA, mm. it's been just stellar mm. over the last two years, three years. I mean, we've co-published uh, three books, mm. four books with IEA and mm. Adam Smith Institute, I think, recently came out. Eamon Butler has yeah. his new uh, pr primer. Primer, yeah. Primer. On, on, uh, why do you say primer? I thought Americans said primer. And 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 and, uh, and, the, and the British say primer. So I said primer and you say primer. Primer. <laughs> <laughs> How did this happen? Anyway, he wrote this wonderful uh, primer on Austrian economics. Yeah. So, yeah, which we have for sale downstairs. Well, Eamon, I'll tell you a little story about him. Um, the re the sole reason why I'm aware of Hayek is because he wrote a primer on Hayek, uh -huh. and that was when I when I was 16 years old, and I read it. At the, um, I was introduced to it by an old Polish war veteran, who said, "If you're an anti-communist, you must read this man Hayek." Yeah. And he gave me a Amon Butler's book. Yeah. So, uh, but he's I, gotten better and better and better over the years. Over the years, yeah. yeah. And so the, your 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 influence is spreading. Mm. It's a marvelous thing, and I I should also note that the Cobden Center ad has adopted this. Open source policy on on publication. Yeah, uh, you're not enforcing uh, old fashioned copyright. No, you're encouraging the ideas to get out there, and this is yes. a radical step. Is of course a step that we've taken yeah. ourselves, and it's, it's helping. Well, Je well, Jeff, we 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 co we're copying you. Okay, you're you're leading you're 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 leading the way. Why I'm I'm not. Fa I, I, we want those ideas spread. Full stop. End of story. Right. So. <laughs> That's that. That's that. That's the mission. So no, no copyright. No anything. Take as much information as you want from there. <laughs> um, I hope. Uh, I hope that will all, that will always be the case. Um, well, it's a model that actually was established by, um, of all people, Leonard Reed in the United States. Because back in the 1950s, when they would print print their little journal, mm. uh, the Freeman that had very limited circulation, but, mm. and he knew it was the most difficult thing was to find readers, so why not mm. let the readers themselves find more readers, and, and he encouraged this open reprint policy, and that's, and that was uh, 60 years ago, it's a very radical step, mm. a, a visionary step, so, mm. uh, and nowadays with copyright laws and intellectual property laws getting ever more strict and shut down, um, uh, we have an opportunity, really, mm. to open up our work and outcompete everybody else. Yes, just because we're we're open sourcing everything. Open source, yeah. No, I think it's fantastic, and then then um, we can uh, get um, the, certainly young people who are more receptive to, to to new ideas, more 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 exposed, um, lower entry point, lower cost. Yes. Um, you know, in the due course of time, maybe we will publish, or maybe you know, maybe we'll just car carry on uh, recommending recommending your publications. Because there's no point in us uh, if we if we can't do anything better uh, than than you. We'll certainly only only ever be plugging your um, your stuff. But where 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 we differ is obviously we're, we're doing a very very British and European theme, right? Uh, whereas you're doing a very American. Uh, yeah, but same. ever more, ever more, you know, I, I was telling somebody at this conference that sometime in the last six months, I've begun to look at a clock and see Shanghai time and uh, Berlin time and, you know, and West Coast time, you know, I say, so yeah. you know, just because these are the people I work with now, yeah. are, it's a global world. Yeah. And uh, more and more. Yeah. Well, we, we'd certainly... Um you know, cooperate on a glo on a yeah on on a, 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 a global basis, but uh, I think f it's because in, in, in the UK is so underrepresented at the moment in these type of Austria Austrian ideas, we're we're we'll, we'll try and give it a flavour uh, for that particular marketplace. It should be as it should be, and 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 also then link together with um, some of the um, European institutes such as um, Alberto Mingane's um, uh, Institute mm. Bruno Leone, Bruno Leone, and um, the Juan de Mariana uh, people and uh, right. Cecile, Cecile Phillips um, in, in, in Institute um, yes. in, in, in France. So, you know, we're trying to link it, link every, every, Molinar. every Molinari. Yeah, we're trying to trying to link every, 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 everyone together. Well, um, we've got Misesians all over the world now, and, yeah. uh, and and at, and at last, finally in the UK. So. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we are we are we are Misesians, but we are we are we're we're also that we're also in that we're very much in that Manchester liberal tradition um, as as well, which is very particular and peculiar to the um, 
to the English uh, political scene. But well, Mises, um, well, Mises loved Compton, and of course, you know, yeah. you've got in in Compton, you've got the whole thing. You've got the free trade, free enterprise, peace, mm-hmm. civil liberties. You've got the whole agenda there. So it's a yeah. wonderful name and a, it's a yeah. wonderful model to follow. Well, the peace thing, I feel, I feel a little bit guilty that we we haven't concentrated so so much on 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 peace. And I was talking to. Uh, Lou about seeing if we can um, network about some some authors anti-war um, authors up up and down uh, the country here to see if they want to write on any UK things because right. there is there is definitely a a, a, um, a, a warmongering or uh, agenda right um, in, in 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 our parliament which I think is very very dangerous yes um, I'm all for defending ourselves but um, I don't necessarily think going. On, on a war footing is is in our best uh, defensive uh, an, interests. An, an uncritical embrace of the American empire is, <laughs> yeah. is a problem, right? <laughs> that's that's right. Yeah. <laughs> the only empire uh, you f- you favor is the Misesian empire, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The, em- <laughs> the empire of free ideas. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Thank you so much, Toby Baxendale, for joining me here. That's a, a great pleasure, Jeff. Um, thank it's great you. Great to have you in Auburn, and we look forward to your next visit. Thank you.